Welcome to Search the Scriptures and study number 13 in the book of Hebrews. I uh, just got back from setting up our booth at the giant Putnam County Fair. thought I'd take advantage and get, get caught up, actually get a day ahead in this study. Let's look at study number 13 in Hebrews. It starts in chapter number 10, verses 1 through 18. And there are three different sets of questions that we're going to try to answer this time. First of all, uh, as we go through this passage, you want to write down as many contrasts as you can find between the sacrifices of the tabernacle and the sacrifices offered by Christ, and why did the latter succeed where the former failed? Second question, what consequences of Christ's sacrifice, A, are enjoyed by him, and B, can be enjoyed by us? And then third, to what truths does the Holy Spirit bear witness in the Old Testament passages that are quoted here. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 10 verses 1 through 18 beginning with the first verse the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming not the realities themselves for this reason it can never by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year make perfect those who draw near to worship. If it could would they not have stopped being offered for the worshipers would have been cleansed once for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins, because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased. Then he said, Here I am. It is, a, it is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, O God. First he said, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them, although the law required them to be made. And then he said, Here I am. I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will, we've been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all, day after day. Every priest stands and performs his religious duties again and again. He offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. Because by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. For the Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First, he says, this is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. And then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, there is no longer any sacrifice for sins. So let's look at the questions. That first question, write down as many contrasts as you can find between the sacrifices of the tabernacle and the sacrifice offered by Christ. And why did the latter succeed where the former failed? Well, the earthly sacrifices were shadows. They had to be repeated year after year after year. They did not remove any guilt. The people still felt that guilt. As a matter of fact, every year there was a constant reminder to them. The sacrifice was a constant reminder of their sin. They did not please the Lord, the sacrifices. The sacrifices did nothing to remove the sin. Whereas the sacrifice of Christ was real, occurred one time, for all time. It removed judgment. It was a reminder of forgiveness, not of sin. It was pleasing to the Lord. It removed our sin completely. And his sacrifice succeeded because it was perfect. Second question, what consequences of Christ's sacrifice are enjoyed by him and what parts can be enjoyed by us? Well, as a result of his self-sacrifice, the enemies of Christ were made his footstool. He's seated at the right hand of God with his feet firmly planted on his enemies, awaiting to return at the command of the Lord. And that path of holiness uh, was paved for all of us that believe through the Lord Jesus Christ. We can, we can come into holiness and be sanctified and God can cleanse us from sin and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. And we don't have to live a life of sin anymore. 
Third question, to what truths does the Holy Spirit bear witness in the Old Testament passages that are quoted here? Well, the Old Testament passages quoted in this passage bear witness to the willingness of Christ to knowing, knowingly come to earth to die for our sin. He knew that before he came. And it also bears witness that the work of the Holy Spirit is to burn the law upon our hearts and upon our minds. It's no longer to be etched in stone. Hope you're having a great day. If you're around Putnam County this week, uh, come to the fair. We'll have a great time together. Eat some great fair food and all that. Hope you're enjoying this study in Hebrews. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, if you're not so far, I hope it gets better. I trust that it will because you have been searching the scriptures. God bless. Have a great day.